In the four years or so since the release of the original pod mic, there have been hundreds of similar inexpensive broadcast dynamic microphones that are aimed at podcasters. In the midst of all that is the Rode PodMic USB. What's different? Is it better than the PodMic OG? How does it stack up against the competition? Is it worth the money? Let's find out. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look and listen to the new Rode PodMic USB and comparing it against the PodMic OG and also the Shure MV7. I'll probably do another video in the future comparing it against more similar microphones, but I like to have longer recordings, longer samples in my video, because I feel like that gives you a better opportunity to evaluate how they sound. So I didn't wanna make this video super long. You are hearing the PodMic USB running over USB or via USB into my Mac Mini, and I'm using the Rode Connect software currently to add some digital signal processing to the microphone. So this is not how it sounds by default, and I don't even know if this sounds good, but I spent some time trying to dial in a sound. So actually I'm gonna go ahead and disable all of this processing. And this is what the mic sounds like by default. Let's go ahead and talk about some of the functionality of the microphone. This is a USB and XLR combo mic, but you can't output both signals at the same time. So it's one or the other, unlike the Shure MV7, which can output a signal from the XLR and the USB at the same time. This has an onboard DSP, digital signal processing. So this processing that you're hearing is actually occurring within the mic, but the parameters are controlled in software. So if you disconnect this from the computer that has the Rode software on it and you plug it into another device, whether or not it has the Rode software, it's going to retain the processing that you have basically configured it with the last time you plugged it in. This works with Mac and iOS. However, you can't plug it into a phone without a special USB to lightning connector. However, I was able to plug it directly into my iPad using the included cable and it found it and recognized it and I was able to record no problem into that. And of course it works on Windows and presumably Android, I guess. Speaking of cables, it comes with this rather nice USB cable. This might be the nicest USB-C cable that I've ever seen. It's kind of flat and you can see it coils up rather nicely, sort of like an audio XLR cable. And I wanna say it's at least three meters long about nine, 10 feet long. The signal coming out of the USB on this microphone is 24 bit and 48 kilohertz. There's obviously a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack so you can plug your headphones directly into the microphone so you can monitor your audio without any latency. And there is a dial on the back of the microphone to adjust the volume of the headphones. It does not adjust the gain of the microphone. However, if you The microphone. You might notice that it looks a little bit different from the PodMic OG, but part of the reason for that is that it comes with this windscreen. Which is on there really good. <laughs> uh, so now you can see that it is essentially the same form, the same shape, the same dimension as the original PodMic, but it's all black. This is an interesting windscreen. I think this is the only one I've ever seen that has a frame or a shell. It's not just a, a little poof of foam. And I would imagine they did that just so it retains some of the visual character of the microphone. I know a lot of people would take the Rode WS2 windscreen and plop it over the pod mic in order to cut down on the plosives and maybe just to shape the sound a little bit better for them. But that covered up, you know, the entire grill and all you could really see was the little back of it poking out. So this is kind of nice. It does a really great job of, of helping with the plosives that this microphone still is very susceptible to. Peter Piper prefers the pod mic for podcasts. 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 And it may or may not improve the sound. I'll leave that up to you and your own judgment. From everything that I've seen from other YouTubers reviews of the pod mic, uh, they're all saying that Rode has no current plans to sell this uh, individually. So unfortunately you won't be able to buy it and then plop it onto your older pod mic if that's what you want it to do. Sorry. The software. I don't want to spend too much time in the software, A, because there are three different apps for some reason, and B, there's just too much to cover and I want to keep this as short as possible. So I am in the Rode Connect software here on my Mac, and that's what I have used to configure the sound of the microphone. So there's Rode Connect, which is this, and then there's Rode Central, and then there's also Rode Unify. In researching this video, I didn't know that Rode had like a sub-brand called Rode X, which is aimed at, I guess, streaming and gaming. They even have like separate microphones, and I guess that's where Rode Unify falls under. And as far as I can tell, I watched 
a little bit of their video demoing Rode Unify, but it looks almost identical to Rode Connect. And I do believe that Rode Unify is also subscription-based, although if you do have a compatible mic or a Rode X mic, you get it for free. Essentially, Rode Connect and Rode Unify are like software-based mixers, and you can kind of think of them as sort of like software Rodecaster Pros. You can see I've got my pod mic USB coming through here as an input, and I've got my system as an input, so if you wanted to play audio from your computer, then that would come through as well. And if you come over here to this tab and go to channel assignment, I believe you can add up to four USB microphones. So they would show up where it says audio devices, and then you could just add, add them to the channel assignment, and then they would be in your little mixing board here. And then if you click on the microphone, this will take you into the processing. And this is in the advanced tab. So you have over here, you've got your input gain. Underneath that, you have a high pass filter. So this is just on or off, and it's set at 60 hertz. So that means it's gonna start rolling off the volume of frequencies at and below 60 hertz. And then over here, you've got an exciter, which is the big bottom, so that's the low frequency boost, and then you've got the aural, aural exciter, which is the high frequency boost. And you sort of see that reflected on this little EQ graph. So I've got my big bottom, so these low frequencies here, and then the aural exciter, these high frequencies. You'll notice that you can't really do anything to the middle frequencies, which is a problem. We'll get back to that. You've got a noise gate, so hopefully I've set that up okay. It's not cutting. You don't it can be problematic if it cuts into the beginning of your words and also cuts off the end of your words. So that's something to look out for with a noise gate. And then lastly, there is a compressor. So there you go, that's the advanced stuff there. So a few things that it's missing that are, I think in the Rodecaster Pro 2, would be a fuller EQ that would allow you to cut frequencies. So in my opinion, what's, what's as important, if not more important, then adding frequencies or adding volume to frequencies is the ability to cut out frequencies. And you can't do that. And of course, you don't have any middle frequency adjustments here in this software. And then there's also no de-esser. Uh, that would be another useful thing for a lot of voices that have some sibilance and you want to cut out that. That's in the Rodecaster, but it's not in this software, unfortunately. Okay, so what happens if you want to go into the, the basic processing menu? If you click on this, it's going to say all parameters will be reset. Do you want to continue? Sure. And now it comes into the simplified menu. So you've got the gain and you've got the high pass filter, but then the other only other parameters you have are called depth, sparkle, and punch. And that just reset the microphone to its defaults. So that brings me to my next problem with the software is that there's no presets. As far as I can tell, I've been through the manual for Rode Connect and I can't find anything about saving a preset. If you wanna be able to compare different settings, you can't really do that. I mean, you could make a recording, but every time that you change the presets, uh, change any of the parameters, it's not going to save them. So I guess what you would have to do would be to write down or screenshot all of the settings so that you could go back in later and then re-input them to make different recordings. Also, if you have multiple people using the same microphone and the same software, then they couldn't have the settings set up for their voice. They would have to redo it every time. So that seems to be a real problem. But real quick to go through this, the depth is just the low end. So as you boost that, it's obviously adding in volume on the low end. Sparkle is the high end, so this is the big bottom, and this is the aural exciter. And then the punch, I believe, is a compressor, but it might also be doing some noise gating and some expanding. I'm not really sure. It doesn't tell you. Settings for both of the pod mics and the Rodecaster Pro, I'm using the regular dynamic mic setting. Both mics are set to 40 dB of gain, and of course I'm not running any mic activator and not doing any processing. A man entered who could hardly have been less than six feet, six inches in height, with the chest and limbs of a Hercules. His dress was rich with a richness which would, in England, be looked upon as akin to bad taste. Heavy bands of astrakhan were slashed across the sleeves in fronts of his double-breasted coat, while the deep blue cloak which was thrown over his shoulders was lined with flame-colored silk and secured at the neck with a brooch which consisted of a single flaming barrel. Boots which extended halfway up his calves and which were trimmed at the tops with rich brown fur completed the impression of barbaric opulence which was suggested by his whole appearance. He carried a broad-brimmed hat in his hand while he wore across the upper part of his face, extending down past the cheekbones, a black vizard mask, which he had apparently adjusted that very moment, for his hand was still raised to it as he entered. From the lower part of the face, he appeared to be a man of strong character, with a thick hanging lip and a long straight chin suggestive of resolution pushed to the length of obstinacy. For the second test with the pod mics, I changed it from the generic dynamic mic to the pod mic setting, but everything else was the same. So 40 dB of gain, no processing, etc. At three o'clock precisely, I was at Baker Street, 
but Holmes had not yet returned. The landlady informed me that he had left the house shortly after 8 o'clock in the morning. I sat down beside the fire, however, with the intention of awaiting him, however long he might be. I was already deeply interested in this inquiry, for though it was surrounded by none of the grim and strange features which were associated with the two crimes which I have already recorded, still, the nature of the case and the exalted station of his client gave it a character of its own. Indeed, apart from the nature of the investigation which my friend had on hand, there was something in his masterly grasp of the situation and his keen, incisive reasoning which made it a pleasure to me to study his system of work and to follow the quick, subtle methods by which he disentangled the most inextricable mysteries. So accustomed was I to his invariable success that the very possibility of his failing had ceased to enter into my head. With the Shure MV7, I set both mics to the generic dynamic mic setting. Both were set to 40 dB of gain, and of course, neither was using any mic activator or any processing in the roadcaster. It was close upon four before the door opened and a drunken looking groom, ill-kempt and side-whiskered, with an inflamed face and disreputable clothes, walked into the room. Accustomed as I was to my friend's amazing powers in the use of disguises, I had to look three times before I was certain that it was indeed he. With a nod, he vanished into the bedroom, whence he emerged in five minutes, tweed-suited and respectable, as of old. Putting his hands into his pockets, he stretched out his legs in front of the fire and laughed heartily for some minutes. For the conclusion of this video, I'm going to switch over to XLR and use an EQ that I have tuned to sound best for my voice and my recording environment. Now you're hearing the pod mic via XLR with some EQ settings that I have applied in post-production. I think it's a lot more natural and sounds like my voice actually sounds, but you might prefer a more processed sound, which is what you'll definitely get out of the apps. They sound very radio, very forward and present. That might work for you. And the other thing to keep in mind is I'm doing this EQ for a video that's going to be recorded, so I have full control over the editing. But if you're trying to do a live stream, then that's going to be a different story. So you might not have access to the same kinds of EQ settings that I'm using in DaVinci Resolve if you're trying to do something live. Your best bet might be using the Rode software to dial in the settings, to dial in the sound as best you can. So to wrap up, I do think that the new pod mic sounds a little bit better than the original pod mic. There's definitely a difference, even in XLR. It has a kind of a fuller sound. It's less aggressively kind of sculpted and boosted in different frequency ranges than the original pod mic. So it has a more neutral platform that I think is gonna work better for more people out of the box. I did some tests of handling noise and off-axis rejection, but I cut them from the video just for the sake of time. But to summarize, the off-axis rejection with the pod mic is pretty good. So it does a good job of rejecting noise outside of the sensitive area in the front of the microphone. As for handling noise, it's not exceptional. And if I were just to sort of handle it, if I wanted to move it around a little bit, how does that sound? I didn't do any self noise or noise floor testing with this microphone, but just listening back to dozens of recordings and making this video, both in the Rodecaster Pro at 40 dB of gain and then over USB with 56 dB of gain, I really can't hear any significant noise. I'm sure if you listened with headphones and raised the volume pretty high, you might be able to hear some kind of noise. I mean, that's pretty normal, but it's really nothing worth complaining about. Is it worth it? Is it a good microphone to pick up? I think there's a lot of really great functionality in here. A lot of people don't want to worry about XLR. They don't want to plug it into an interface. They don't want to have to buy an interface, etc. So having a microphone that works over USB can be a benefit. But then in the future, or if you're taking it on the road with you and you have the opportunity to plug it into an interface over XLR, then you have that ability without having to get an all new microphone. The different Rode software adds in a lot of functionality and you might like all that functionality. You might like the way Rode is doing things, the way things are laid out, and that's great. You can take it or leave it essentially. The new windscreen is definitely a bonus. It does a really great job of minimizing the plosives and it doesn't change the character of the microphone too much in my opinion while still maintaining a little bit of that aesthetic quality of the microphone without a windscreen. Is that important? I think so. For people who are doing a video component to their audio recordings, the stuff that's on or in the video is important. Going back to the beginning of this video, I alluded to the fact that there are so many options on the market. So I can't really tell you whether or not this is the one. There are definitely cheaper options out there. And of course, there are more expensive options, the MV7, being one of those more expensive options. If you have the original PodMic, do you need to run out and buy the new PodMic USB? 
No, not at all. If you've been using it and you've gotten good results from it, if people are liking your content, that's what's important. I hope you got something out of that. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you know where to go. As always, I appreciate you watching the video. I'm going to quit playing with my windscreen, and maybe I'll see you in another one.